Thank you, Lord. Lord, we thank you today for our gathering. Thank you for the saints that are here gathered. Thank you for the saints that are, are, will be tuning in later. And, and thank you, Lord, for those that are gathering in other places. Thank you for the saints that are meeting and constantly praising your name. Continue to bless the people of the Lord. Lord God, you've called us to pray one for another and to pray for the nation and to pray for the people of the nation. Lord God, we pray for this nation, for America. Lord, we pray for the leadership, for the, for the incoming president and for the outgoing president. Lord, we ask that you would just, just cause the saints to let the light of Christ be seen by all. We ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. And amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Give God another clap offering. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Amen. God bless you. You may be seated. Amen. Uh, we're just going through times like, like we've never seen before. Amen. Bad enough that we're dealing with a, a pandemic. Amen. But uh, we're dealing with all kinds of strange things. And, you know, um, just, it's just things that keep me uh, wondering, you know, uh, what's going on. Uh, um, you know, I've never seen a situation like this with, this with the transition of the leadership of the country. I've never seen anything like this. Ain't never, ain't never seen anything like this. Even though back in, in the early days there were some terrible things, but, you know, not like this. You know, you know, you know we did have a, a vice president once, that once back when duels were uh, le legal, uh, we had a, price, a vice president that uh, uh, shot and killed Alexander ha Hamilton, Aaron Burr, who was the grandson of a great preacher. Uh, he shot and killed uh, Alexander Hamilton. Hamilton. So it's always been some strange things. I think Andrew Jackson was in, in, in a duel, you know. But, you know, we're supposed to be making progress and moving forward into times of, uh, you know, more, more civilized behavior. Amen? Amen. But, uh, you know, we have to, have to pray for the times that we're living in. Because you know, we got some people that are trying to stir up some trouble. Amen? They're trying to stir up some trouble. And... Uh, you know, and it can get worse than what they think. Amen. Praise the Lord. But we thank God for uh, the gospel. Thank God for the Bible. Thank God for the word of the Lord. Amen. Praise the Lord. Um, we're going to go right into the word. In, in uh, Matthew's, the third chapter. Matthew's the, the third chapter and the first verse. In those days came John the Baptist preaching in the wilderness of Judea and saying, Repent, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. For this is he that was spoken of by the prophet Isaiah saying the voice of one crying in the wilderness prepare ye the way of the Lord make his paths straight and the same John had his raiment of camel's hair and a leather girdle about his waist and his food was locust and wild honey amen Father, we thank you, Lord, for your word. Pray, Lord, that you bless our hearts as we meditate on your word. Let your word fall on good ground. Let our hearts be good ground. Let the heart of every hearer be good ground. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. John the Baptist, uh, the, the first, first preacher of the New Testament, amen, uh, a, a unique person in the history of the world. Amen. The Bible, you know, you, you, you're somebody special when your birth is announced by angels. 
Amen. Uh, and then you're even more special when your birth is announced by an archangel. And it's uh, even more special when your birth is announced by the same archangel that announces the birth of the Messiah. Amen. Praise the Lord. And the Bible tells us that John the Baptist, amen, that's what the Bible says. It says he was filled with the Holy Ghost in his mother's womb. Actually, the Bible says he was filled with the Holy Ghost from his mother's womb. Amen? And uh, Jesus spoke highly of John the Baptist and said, of those born of women, there's none greater than John the Baptist. Amen? And he was sent to be the forerunner of the Messiah. Amen? Praise the Lord. So he was actually preaching the gospel of Jesus Christ Amen. Uh, before Jesus was preaching the gospel of Jesus Christ. Amen. Uh, look at another scripture over in, over in Mark. In Mark, the uh, first chapter, first chapter of Mark. And it talks about uh, the beginning of the, of the ministry of our Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, first chapter and 14th verse. It says, now after John was put in prison, Jesus came into Galilee. Preaching the gospel of the kingdom. And saying, the time is fulfilled. And the kingdom of God is at hand. Repent and believe the gospel. Amen. So we see that Jesus came preaching the exact same message that John the Baptist preached. Amen. Even though he was the central figure of the message. Amen. And it's, uh, going back to Matthew, the third chapter, it says, In those days came John the Baptist preaching in the wilderness of Judea and saying, Repent. They both had the same message. It starts off with repentance. Amen? It says, In those days came John the Baptist preaching in the wilderness of Judea. You know, he had to know God was with him out there in the wilderness all by, you know, he had to start out by himself. <laughs> Amen. Praise the Lord. But the anointing of the Holy Ghost was upon him. Amen. And if you can attract thousands out into the wilderness without any commercial advertisements. Amen. Praise the Lord. The Lord must be with you. Amen. And it became uh, the most charismatic time of, in the history of Israel when people were going out into the wilderness to hear this man telling them to get right with God. Amen. Praise the Lord. And as I said, when we come over to Mark, amen, the first chapter, Jesus, it says in, in, in Verse 14, now after John was put in prison, because you all know that John the Baptist was put in prison, amen, for preaching righteousness and for condemning the unlawful marriage of Herod. Amen. It says, now after John was put in prison, Jesus came into Galilee preaching the gospel of the kingdom of God. And saying, the time is fulfilled and the kingdom of God is at hand. Or that is to say that the kingdom of God is near. Amen. That the, the opportunity to be a part of the kingdom is at hand. It says, and saying, the, king, the time is fulfilled and the kingdom of God is at hand. Repent and believe the gospel. Amen. He didn't see any need to change the message that John was preaching. Amen. 
Jesus came and preached the exact same thing. Jesus had often been in the, in the audience when John was preaching. Amen? Praise the Lord. And uh, Jesus was baptized by John the Baptist. Praise the Lord. Amen. And when it was time for Jesus to come forth, he came forth with the same, same message. Amen. And this is the message that had been predicted by the prophet Daniel in the Old Testament. Amen. In Daniel 7, 28. Let's just take a look at that scripture. In Daniel 7, we'll say 7, 27. And the kingdom and dominion and the greatness of the kingdom under the whole heaven shall be given to the people of the saints of the most high whose kingdom is an everlasting kingdom and all dominions shall serve and obey him amen and then in uh, the same chapter daniel the seventh chapter and the 18th verse it says but the saints of the most high shall take the kingdom and possess the kingdom forever even forever and ever amen praise the lord now, we're not going to try to go into a Bible study about the Antichrist and the tribulation. Amen. We've been talking about the tribulation and the Antichrist over several weeks now. Amen. But back during that time when Daniel foretold, amen, that the Messiah would be coming, he also said that the Messiah would uh, assume dominion of all things and that the saints would reign with him. So that's the, that's the good news of the gospel. That is the good news of the gospel is that, uh, you know, the kingdom of heaven is, of, is, is near. The doors are open. Amen? The message invites sinners, amen, to repent, change your ways, change your mindset. Repent and believe the gospel. The Bible tells us that all we have to do is believe the gospel and we shall be saved. Amen. Praise the Lord. Uh, it seems like the message has been changed. Uh, we, 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 we live in a time where everybody wants change. You, you know, everybody's looking for change. I guess we get tired of the same thing over and over. We, we, we want change. We want change when we want it. Amen. And so the preacher's been changing the message. Amen. Uh, to cater to this constant craving for change. And it's bad to change the message that came from God. The gospel of Jesus Christ is the message that came from God God sent his only begotten son. Amen. First, God sent the, the prophets. One by one, the prophets came, letting people know, amen, that God was going to send the Messiah. Amen. And Jesus came so that he could raise the sons of earth. It's one of the Christmas songs we sing. It says, he came to raise the sons of earth. He came to give us second birth. Amen. And that's, the, that's the, the theme of the gospel of our Lord. That's the message. That's the only message. You know, uh, in, in, in the Christian church, we, we always want to change things. We've been changing the message. And we're not doing it the way the Lord instructed. Amen. If Jesus didn't change John's message and after Jesus preached the message and, and recruited his disciples and trained his disciples, amen, and he allowed his disciples to travel with him and to live with him and to be in every, every session of his preaching, amen, and then as after he had 
been crucified because he, he, he mixed that in with the gospel. He let them know that he came to be crucified because the disciples didn't really know that he came to die. They were ready to take over, amen, Israel under the leadership of Jesus right then. They thought it was, uh, they thought it was about this world. They thought it was about, you know, this life. Uh, but it was about a new life. Amen? It was about the everlasting kingdom. It wasn't about the kingdom of, of Israel in Jerusalem. Amen? And uh, they often would ask Jesus, at, wilt thou at this time, you know, take over the kingdom? Uh, but God sent Jesus into the world to give mankind a chance. Give mankind an opportunity, amen, to be among the chosen few. The Bible says many are called, but few are chosen. And, and we all, we've been given the opportunity to be among the few. When it, when it talks about the few, it's talking about the few among all humans that have ever lived on the face of the earth. How many billions are we talking about? I cannot, I can't, who can tell? Amen. But among all the people that have ever been born and lived on the earth, only a few will be chosen. The Bible says many are called. As a matter of fact, all are called. Everybody's called. Amen. Praise the Lord. But few are chosen. Amen. And we're chosen to be a part of the E eternal, everlasting kingdom of the Lord Jesus Christ. That's, that's the gospel. That's the gospel message. You know, we've got so many messages coming out of our churches. The churches, you know, have splintered off into different little groups and we've got different messages. And there's a lot of foolishness going on in the churches that is very grievous, you know. Uh, I just saw uh, my, my daughter Robin and, and my wife were showing me uh, on their phone. Uh, you know, thank God we live in a time of uh, instant information. And they, they were showing me how a lot of Christian organizations that lined up behind Trump, as a matter of fact, they didn't just line up behind Trump, amen, but they had prophesied that he would get a second term. And because they, they went out on a limb and prophesied, amen, when they saw that it wasn't happening, then they join this conspiracy theory and, and, they, and they're peddling it now. And, you know, it's, it's, it's creating a sad and dangerous situation. And you would think, you know, that it would just be some folk in the world. There's a lot of, lot of church folk, what we call the mega church, many of the mega churches, you know, and my daughter and, and my wife were showing me, I, you know, I, I didn't know, I had never seen this video, but they were showing me this thing where, uh, you, some of you might remember when there was a, a thing going on in the churches where, you know, you got church folk that was always jumping on every, every new bandwagon that rolled by, amen, and they used to have a thing called this, uh, they called it the laughing ministry. I used to get so angry at the foolishness that the church used to get tangled up in. The laughing ministry. So, any of you remember that? And, and everybody was, you know, they was going to these churches where this laughing anointing would come. And everybody in the church would just start laughing for no reason. Nobody told a joke. Nobody said nothing funny. Amen? And, and they was calling it an anointing, an, an, an anointing. And, you know, you would have one nut in one corner that would start it. One nut just started talking about ha, 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 ha. And then another, and somebody would say, that's the, that's the laughing anointing. So everybody want to get in on the anointing. Before you know it, the whole church. They have, and so they were showing me at Kenneth Copeland's church how Kenneth Copeland was laughing at the results of the election because we don't realize how wrong we are that Biden is not the president. So Kenneth Copeland, in his telecast, was encouraging his massive congregation to laugh at the, at the, he said, he said, Biden is president. Ha, 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 ha. And, you know, he just was carrying, 
these are the kind of things that, you know, Christians, that's why Christians need to stay away from secular things, stay away from politics. You, you're supposed to preach the gospel. And when we stray and when we drift and when we want to give it a new twist, when we want to adjust the message to modern philosophy or modern trends, amen, that's where you wind up. Amen. You have these people all over the building laughing. Ha, ha, ha. Well, you know, when you, when you depart from the word, don't you know our security is in the word of God? Amen. Praise the Lord. The new covenant, as we pointed out last week, is God said that I'm not just giving them my righteous instruction in a book as we did under the old covenant. God said in the new covenant, I'm going to write my word on their heart. Amen. So when you become born again, you fall in love with the word. You fall in love with the truth. Amen. The Holy Spirit will guide you into all truth and away from foolishness and madness. Amen. Praise the Lord. Thank God for the Holy Ghost. Thank God for the blood of Jesus. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Amen. But we have people that, you know, you can't let your emotions guide you when it comes to spiritual things. Amen. We got to go by the word. Praise the Lord. Jesus said, he that has my word and keeps it, that's who loves me. Amen. Bible says, blessed is the man that walks not in the counsel of the ungodly. Amen. Now, the counsel of the ungodly could be just getting caught up in the news media or getting caught up in the the, the latest philosophy. Amen? Go by the word of God. Stand on the word of God. And, and love the word of God. Jesus said, he that hath my word and keeps it. Amen? This is how we show God that we love him. This is how we show Jesus that we love him. Amen? Amen? We've, we've got to have a love for the word. If Jesus is the word incarnate, you can't say you love Jesus if you don't love the word. Amen. On Christ, the solid rock, I stand. All of the ground is sinking sand. Amen. Praise the Lord. The Bible lets us know. I mean, that we should be focused on spiritual things. Amen. It says, if ye then be risen with Christ. In other words, if you're born when you're born again. Amen. Christ in you is the hope of glory. And you're going to be guided by the Holy Spirit because God's word will penetrate into your spirit because God has put his word in your heart. God has given you a love. When the word comes, amen, you would rather obey the word even if you have to suffer. Amen. Praise the Lord. That's why the Bible says, be ye therefore steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord. Those words come in, in 1 Corinthians, the 15th chapter. It, those words come after he told us about this royal inheritance that we will have in the, in the kingdom. Amen. Uh, we are joint heirs with Jesus Christ. Amen. And we inherit not only a kingdom, but we're going to lay down this mor mortal body. Amen. And this mortal will become immortal. We're going to have eternal life. Amen. He that believeth on the Son hath what? Everlasting life. Amen. Praise God. Amen. That's why it says, O death, where is thy sting? O grave, where is thy victory? Amen. The sting of death is sin. Amen. Praise God. So, the first step in preaching the gospel is to call sinners to repentance. Amen. It told us that John the Baptist went forth preaching and it said, 
and he said, repent. That was the first word of his message. I imagine it was the first word every time John preached, every day when he preached, he started off with the same word. Repent. He would look and see the, the thousands that were gathering. You know, uh, you know sometimes we preachers, we get, we get a little drunk when we see a massive crowd. Amen. But John didn't, he didn't change his message. He, he, think of how it was in those days. John never had notes. Amen. I need my, need my notes today because I'm a senior citizen. I'm just kidding. I depend on the Holy Ghost too. I, de I depend on the Holy Ghost more than these notes. Amen. I hardly ever get a chance to, to all, all my neatly uh, organized, structured sentences. I'm counting, I'm waiting on the Holy Ghost. But imagine how it was with John the Baptist. He preached every day. John preached every day. Amen. Praise the Lord. Jesus preached every day. And neither one of them said, well, well, well it's, it's time for me to study for tomorrow. Let me get something. Let me get. No, they had something. They had the one message. The one message. And both of them started off the same way. It said, said when John started off, amen, over in, over in Mark, first chapter, 14th verse, now, after John was put, oh, well, this is when Jesus was started off. Well, both of them started off the same way. Now, after John was put in prison, Jesus came into Galilee preaching the gospel of the kingdom of God and saying, the time is fulfilled. Amen. And the kingdom of God is nigh. Amen. And thank God the kingdom of God is still near. Amen. It, it, the Bible says the word is nigh you. It's even in your heart and in your mouth. Amen. Praise the Lord. The time is fulfilled and the kingdom of God is nigh at hand. Then he says, repent. You know, that's the, that's the main ingredient in the gospel. That's what kicks it off. That's what starts it. That starts your relationship with God. That starts your path to being born again. Amen? If you're going to walk in the path of righteousness, it starts with what? Repent. Repent of your own way. Accept God's way. Amen? Embrace God's word. Amen. It says, Jesus said, the time is fulfilled and the kingdom of God is at hand. Repent. And believe the gospel. And then over in, over in Luke, the 24th chapter. In Luke, the 24th chapter and the 47th verse. It shows that when John the Baptist was preaching to the masses and the multitudes that walked out into the desert, into the hot sun of the desert, they didn't carry no umbrellas. They didn't have, what, no umbrellas. Amen? They pressed their way out by the thousands to hear John the Baptist. And even Jesus was in the crowd. And on one particular day, when Jesus knew his time was come, Jesus said, baptize me, John. Amen? Jesus knew it was near the time of the beginning of his ministry. Amen. And as they would gather, John had one message for everybody. Repent. Repent. Amen. Then when Jesus started, Jesus started his message and was saying the exact same thing that John said. And he started it with repentance. That's the element that's been taken out of the preaching today. People are, they want to be philosophers. Amen. They want to be elocutionists. They, they want to be, you know, respected for their eloquent speaking. Amen. They want to give it a new twist. They want something that will catch your attention. Amen. You don't want nothing to catch your attention but the, but the message of hope, which says repent and you shall be born again. Amen. 
says, and that repentance uh, in, in the 46th chapter, I mean, excuse me, the 24th chapter and the 47th verse, 27th chapter of Luke, and we'll start at the 46th verse. Well, I'll start at the 45th verse. Then opened he their understanding that they might understand the scriptures. Isn't it wonderful how God can open our understanding? But God can't, God can't open your understanding of the scriptures if you won't read the scriptures or if you won't study the scriptures. Amen? If you love the word, you know, study to show yourself approved unto God. Find out what he wants you to do. Amen? Find out how he wants you to walk. Amen. Find out what is pleasing in his sight. It says, then open he their understanding that they might understand the scriptures. And said unto them, thus it is written, and thus it behooved Christ to suffer and to rise from the dead the third day. Also, key components of the gospel. Amen. Amen. And that repentance, that's where we respond to this message, amen? And that repentance, and this is the resurrected Christ giving the instructions to the disciples. He's about to ascend up into glory. He's passing the baton to the disciples and he's telling them what to preach, amen? And he says, and that repentance and forgiveness of sin. You know what they're preaching a lot in, in, in many of our mega churches, and that's why they have become mega churches, some of the mega churches, is they're preaching forgiveness of sin. They leave the repentance part out. Forgiveness of sin. You're all good. They look at an audience of, of 40, uh, excuse me, uh, of, of 4,000, 10,000, 30,000, amen, and and they tell them, you're all good. Just live your best life. You know, what does that mean? Amen. Some of them are giving them financial counseling. Amen. And that repentance and remission of sin should be preached in his name among all nations beginning at Jerusalem. Amen. If you are born again, if you be risen with Christ, the moment you were born again, amen, Christ comes in. The Holy Spirit, you're born of the Spirit. Amen. He came into his own, his own received him not, but to as many as received him, to them gave he the power, power, Holy Ghost power, gave he the power to become that's the only way you can become a son of God, by the power of the Holy Spirit, the transforming power of the Holy Spirit. He came unto his own and, to, and his own received him not, but to as many who opened their heart and received him, who humbled themselves and said, come into my heart, Lord Jesus. Forgive me, Lord God. Save me. Amen. If thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead. That's believe in the gospel. Amen. Thou shalt be saved. Thou shalt be delivered. Thou shalt be set free. Amen. Praise God. Amen. We are born of his spirit. Amen. And we are led by his spirit. We are guided by his spirit. Amen. If ye be risen with him, the Bible says in Colossians, the third chapter, verses one through four, it says, if ye then be risen with Christ, seek those things that are above. Don't get so caught up in the things of the world. Amen. Amen. That's what you were saved from, the world. You were saved from the world, you were saved from sin, you were saved from yourself, your own way, and the way of the world. The Bible says, love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. For all that is in the world, the lust of the eyes, the lust of the flesh, and the pride of life is not of the Father, but of the world. Amen. That's why I'm not going to get all emotional about politics. 
Amen. Mankind is, mankind is crazy. And you never know what man's going to do next. I'm not signing on for any kind of a secular movement. Amen. I'm not, I'm not signing on to some political movement. I'm not going to let the world tell me what is right and what is good. We're supposed to tell them. We got people telling us what is good. Amen. They even want to tell you what charities to pick. If you buy a certain car, then we will donate a certain. They want you to join in on their church. Don't tell me what, to, what, what I should love. I'll give my money to the church. Amen. Praise the Lord. The Bible said that if I give my money, if I, if I pay my tithes, that's what the Bible says. See, you got to love the word. Amen. And God said, prove me, test me, try me. And see if I won't pour you out a blessing that you won't even have room to receive. He's talking about tithes. Amen. If I pay my tithes, I ain't going to try to keep up with all these different charities. And I don't need some secular, unsaved person telling me what to do. If I want to buy a car, I want to buy a car. I don't want you to tell me you're going to sign me up for, for one of five charities that you picked out. No, no, no. Amen. I'm not following the way of the world. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. If I pay my tithes, I've covered it all. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. We're through. We, we done run out of time. We're over time. We're on overtime now. Amen. I heard Ronnie clapping back there. <laughs> I'm just kidding. I'm just joking. Amen. Praise the Lord. But if you are risen with Christ, if you are born again, set your affections, amen, on spiritual things. Get caught up in these spiritual things. And the joy of the Lord will be your strength. Let's all stand on our feet. If ye then be risen with Christ, Set your affections on things above where Christ sits on the right hand of the majesty on high. Amen. Praise the Lord. I want to read that, 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 that same scripture, Colossians, amen, the third chapter. As we go into our altar call. You done quoted it all day. Now you got to read it. Uh, yeah, well, I want to read it right out of the scriptures. Amen. Bear with me. Bear with me. Here we are. Colossians, the third chapter. And it's, it starts off. If ye then be risen with Christ, seek those things which are above where Christ sits on the right hand of God. That's where he's at now. Amen. It says, set your affections on things above. And then it says, what? Not on things on the earth. Build your hopes on things eternal. Amen. Hold to God's unchanging hand. Set your affections on things above, not on things on the earth. For you are dead, and your life is hidden with Christ in God. When Christ, who is our life, shall appear, then shall ye also appear with him. That's the part I wanted to, wanted to make sure that I gave you in that particular scripture. It says, when Christ, who is our life, shall appear, then shall ye appear with him. When he's coming back, the Bible says, amen, that the saints will come back with him. And the saints that are on earth who are alive at the time of his return, the Bible says, in a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, we shall be changed. Amen? And we will be caught up together with them to meet the Lord in the air. Amen. 
We're going to get our assignment for eternity. Amen. Praise the Lord. Who knows what God has in store for you? Eye has not seen, ear has not heard, it has not entered into the hearts of men. The things that God has prepared, God's got something in store for those that love his word. Amen. And I'm anxious to see. Hallelujah. Jesus said, I'm going away. Amen. And I'm going to prepare a place for you that where I am, there ye may be also. Amen? Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. He's been working on a building for us, a place for you. Glory to God. Amen. We're going to pray now, and we're going to pray for those on our prayer list. Amen. Amen. Uh, Sister Camilla, she's having surgery on Thursday. Sister Camilla. They wrote Carmilla, but I was told to say Cam Camilla, right? The Lord knows who we're talking about. <laughs> Amen. Uh, on Thursday, she'll be having surgery, so uh, let's keep her right at the top of our prayer list. Amen. Straight through to Thursday. Amen. Until we hear good news. And Sister Candy Smallwood is on our prayer list. She's making progress. She's doing doing good. She talked with my wife. Uh, my son Roger, Jackie, and Darian, they tested positive and they had symptoms and signs of COVID. They're both, they're all making progress. Uh, Darian was sent home from his job. He works for, he works for uh, Acme and he was sent home from his job because he was sick. And uh, when he got home, his mother and father were already in quarantine, but they're all doing better now. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. Praise God. Praise God. And uh, Sister Natalie says she's been battling a little stomach virus for the last few days. Amen. So let's look to the Lord. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you, Lord, for your goodness and for your mercy. We thank you for prayer. You told us to pray. You told us to pray one for another. Lord, we pray for the names that we hold up before you. Lord, for your children, for our, for our brothers and, and our sisters. Lord, in the name of Jesus, Lord God, let their, let their hearts feel your presence. Lord, let their body feel your touch. Lord, we ask this in Jesus' name. And we thank you, Lord. Lord God, we pray for everyone listening. Lord, those that may be sick. Lord God, I pray that you would touch them in Jesus' name. Touch them, Lord, like you touched me when I was lost in sin, when evil spirits were trying to destroy me. And Lord God, you had me to go and turn on my radio and hear a man of God say, draw near and put your hand on the radio. And Lord, you expelled the evil spirits out of my life. And now, Lord, you've given me power over the powers of darkness in the name of Jesus. Lord God, we pray for anyone, Lord God, that's in trouble, anyone that's bound. Oh God, we pray in Jesus' name as they call on the name of Jesus. We pray that you set them free in Jesus' name. Lord, our heart and our soul says amen and amen. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Now may grace, peace, and mercy and the love of God through Jesus Christ our Lord rest, roll, and abide with you all now and forever and let all God's people say amen. 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 Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Amen. God bless you. You are dismissed.